My name is John Fink, and I've been working in uh, the various arts for some time now. Mostly in, um, in clay, ceramics, but I use uh, modeling of clay and incorporate other mixed materials with them. When you combine things, mixed materials, uh, is sometimes referred to as constructions or as assemblage, where you assemble uh, found uh, manufactured objects that corporations have discarded, or even going down the street. Um, you see uh, homeowners that put uh, all this so-called junk at the curbside to be taken away. You have to glue things together, you have to screw them, you have to clamp them, bolt them, whatever you can do to make it a good sturdy construction. Painters don't have that so much to do. So, but when you have all these um, various parts, you have to put them together to make them work. And at the same time, not just for physical work, but symbolically to say the thing that you hope to say. One of the nice things about uh, having a one-person art show is that uh, you have a couple of dozen pieces of art uh, in the same room, and it gives you uh, an understanding of uh, where you've been as an artist, what you've been thinking. Uh, it gives you ideas for the next uh, work that you're going to be doing, and of course most artists are going to be doing uh, the most important of their work, the next piece, the next pieces. So uh, the technique that uh, I vacillate back and forth between is the assemblage technique. And what you're seeing here is the assemblage technique. It's an assembling of cast off pieces of uh, industrial uh, objects, uh, things that were originally designed for something else. And uh, for example, you can see the saw blade up there at the top. Uh, you can see uh, a mason's uh, trowel. Uh, these pieces I found at uh, a, um, a materials resource center where they accept all kinds of things from industry so they don't go into the landfill and they recycle them. Artists come out and they shop and for just a small amount of money you can buy a lot of stuff. I don't know where I found this wood but uh, there are two sections here that I uh, can put together. And so what does it all mean? Uh, well, you know, it's my idea that uh, people who are workaholics or who worship at the altar of work, and this is kind of like an altar piece, um, chained to one's work, you know. And uh, what it does when uh, your work cuts into the rest of your life, and if you look up closely on that saw blade, you can see all the elements of stress and what it does to the uh, your loved ones and etc. etc. So um, <clears throat> uh, this piece up in here is a cinder. It's a piece of uh, burnt out coal and what's left over uh, in the ash. And so burnt out, chained, uh, spread with the child, cut through, uh, all those kinds of things. These are kind of an industrial kind of things that suggest that um, the life that we once knew is no longer there. The fractured uh, anatomy of the face, and so on. So as we go around the gallery here, you'll see some others in the same style of work. You know, when artists work, uh, they, they work uh, to bring things together that have symbols, uh, symbolic kinds of things. And so, looking at this piece, uh, we'll be, uh, I'll be saying something about that. But again, it's the assemblage technique, and it's out of the shoe series that I've done, incorporating actual shoes into the design. The design means it's an ordering of uh, the parts of a composition, and above, uh, one of the things that an artist is, is a designer. Uh, so this particular piece, uh, if you see the back of it, here's a woman's shoe, and uh, it's been scorched and burnt a little bit. Uh, they, I used some foam in here because I've seen some of the 
polluted waters and some of the outfall pipes of industry that have all this brown looking foam uh, floating around and what the manufacturing and industry does to our environment. And so uh, this is really a statement uh, about uh, our uh, assault on the environment. I have a shoe tree in here, half of it is over here, uh, but it's a continuation here uh, in terms of design. Now, take a look at the next ones that we see using the assemblage technique. Well, if you look at some of the, uh, the work in the show, you can see that they're made entirely of clay. Working in clay in my studio, it's um, a wonderful therapy, actually. You know, it, uh, the actual kneading of the clay, the uh, modeling of it, uh, it, it, it goes relatively fast because you push it this way, push it that way, and if you like what you see, well, then you keep it. If not, well, it's so easy to change. As long as that hasn't dried out, you can make changes on it. The fountain that you see at the uh, end of the gallery here, that's made entirely of clay, with the exception of, of course, the pump, the motor that's hidden in the, in the interior of the, the fountain. Something about fountains. Uh, I like making fountains. I've got several of them on my garden, and we sit in the gazebo and listen to them gurgle away and watch the birds come to get a drink. And there's something, uh, something healing about water trickling and gurgling and, and the syncopation of, of it while well, it's, it's playing away. The birds love it, and so do I. A lot of uh, things about uh, being an artist and the creative process is kind of like brainstorming. You just uh, start moving the clay around. This is all clay has been fired into ceramic. But you start moving the clay around and uh, um, it's so pliable, so soft. You can stretch it, you can press into it and it'll leave a pattern. And just to see what will happen. And um, and when I got to working with these elongated forms, um, I could see how they would twist so easily and also um, it's easy to get a texture in them by uh, pressing a, an object into it. Uh, this one, uh, once I've got the basic form uh, going in it, it kind of reminded me of a dancer with a, a long dress on, uh, with folding a folded costume of sorts. Um, in the uh, forming of this, I would take my hands and press my thumbs into this and press it in thumbs and see if I liked it. And then I said, oh, it needs some pattern in there. It needs something. And so I roll up these little balls and stuck those in there. Uh, do they represent anything uh, particular? Uh, no, pattern. And it's the, uh, the totality of it. Uh, just about uh, in this one it's not so much a figure as it is maybe uh, a plant or something emerging out of the ground um, could be an abode it could be a, a tree of some sort you see a little egg in here and uh, as if a bird or something has set up a residence on the other side there's an opening in here that uh, suggests um, a hollow space on the inside, that there's a life that might be going on on the inside of this form. So outside, inside, around, twist, up, you know, it has some, something to do with growth and movement. I sometimes stop at the uh, thrift stores like the Salvation Army thrift store or the uh, Goodwill and to see what kind of junk they have. Uh, or uh, what things people have contributed that uh, would interest me as, as an artist using this technique of assemblage and uh, working in clay. And uh, again, these, these two pieces here are really kind of reflected uh, reflections of my childhood memories. 
where I liked uh, lizards and uh, loved elephants going to the circus. And uh, but again, it's in the shoe series. And if you open this up, uh, you can see a child's shoe on the inside filled with marbles. Some dinosaurs creeping along the outside. But this is called uh, the title of these are, are called childhood reflections. Dinosaurs. Childhood reflections, elephants, and uh, both similar to one another in terms of a theme. Uh, so again, it's a, uh, I love the idea of reflections. If you look down inside this one, there are some um, mirrors down in there, but with some transparent photographs of myself when I was probably five, six, seven years old. I have a workshop in a two-story building in the back of my house, uh, living in a Victorian house. And um, this uh, building uh, was once uh, uh, you know, a place to house horses, and uh, then it became a garage at the lower level. And then, uh, so I've expanded it into an art studio where I've got a lot of equipment. Uh, I've got, um, drills and saws and uh, welding equipment and potter's wheels and I have a separate shed, a building that has four uh, ceramic ovens in it. So this is made of ceramic. It's all ceramic with the exception of two pieces that are found objects. I just have some um, a mechanism here with uh, numbers on them uh, embedded in the forehead of this figure. And um, here we have uh, what appears to be seashells turned over with a metal butterfly that's glued on the top. So, but all of this, this, this circular form was formed on the potter's wheel and uh, all of the pieces were um, arranged and put together. All the pieces then were glazed with the exception of the these metal pieces that were glued on after everything was finished. Uh, but um, yeah, it went into the uh, ceramic ovens, the kiln, and uh, would fire it. The bigger the piece, the thicker the walls, uh, the longer it takes to fire it, or the longer you should take to fire it. Uh, some of these uh, sculptures in here, all ceramic sculptures, I, I brought it up, uh, the temperature up to 2,200 degrees over a 34, 36 hour period of time. Once it reached the uh, necessary temperature, then I brought it back down over a 34, 36 hour period of time. So um, the, uh, the electric company uh, sure likes the way I uh, use up the electricity. Uh, the title of this is uh, The Other Side of Peace. Peace on the top the other side, which is almost a, an astonishment, uh, a shocking uh, look to the face, uh, numbers suggesting a mechanized uh, approach to living. That's kind of my theme throughout the show, transitional man, uh, how we're being affected by uh, all the things that we do, television and how we absorb our time watching television how we have our nose stuck into our smartphones, uh, communicating with short messages back to other people. Uh, someone made a statement about the, uh, it was the guy who invented the cell phone, who said, uh, and the, uh, we used to uh, uh, receive a call from a place. Now we are calling people, not places. Now the central part of this sculpture, which is mixed materials, um, was modeled out of clay, soft clay, and I did it for a demonstration in one of my sculpture classes at the uh, college where I teach. And um, so I modeled uh, with all the proportions correctly um, so that, um, that everything looked uh, relatively realistic and then I took two bricks that I had uh, laying over there on the table there and came over and just smashed them on the top and the soft clay just gave way 
and uh, it had a very expressive look to it. Uh, the title of this is Overload uh, Reality, uh, or Reality Overload Number Two. Uh, we have one over here that's similar to that, uh, of Reality Overload Number One. But representing uh, the things that happen to us that uh, are obstacles in our life, uh, whether it be financial ruin, whether it be um, a hurricane coming in and knocking our houses down and flooding everything, or uh, you name it. And um, so what does it do to us? It uh, just knocks us off of our feet and knocks us in the head. Well, integrating the materials, the diversity of the materials, sometimes they're uh, metal, sometimes they're wood, sometimes they're plastic, all in one piece. And this process of uh, integrating things physically and visually, uh, it's not unlike our struggle as human beings to integrate the substance of our lives and living into uh, a life that is a balanced life. Creating art is a, an expression of things that's concerned with our uh, inner self. It's a mystery, but it's what artists do. Good part of art, uh, working in, uh, in the visual arts, is uh, your willingness to take risks, uh, the willingness to um, try something uh, even though you think it may uh, not work, you don't know how you're going to work it out, but to take risks. Because that'll take you to a new place, a place that you normally wouldn't have done, a place where you certainly wouldn't have been. And if, if you do make a mistake, it's bought and paid for, for the lessons learned from that mistake. And it may mean that you have to take uh, parts of it off and uh, go back, uh, you know, a whole day's work and start start again because it, it doesn't look right. Because uh, someone will say, well, why did you take it apart? That looked good to me. And, well, it didn't look good to myself. So that's what an artist does. He makes judgments about his work. When I have my work on exhibit, uh, I depend on people to tell me what they see in it because they'll point out sometimes something that they see that I didn't see. And that's that recreative process is certainly a valuable one. Actually, I find it very difficult to stand in front of my work and explain it to anyone. I think that it's, um, I've done my part, then it's, uh, they have to do their part in picking up the clues 